One of the features of MarkEdit that I haven't really talked a whole lot about, but have been around um, probably for about six or eight months now, is the ability to connect MarkEdit to a uh, MySQL database or a SQLite database and evaluate the, the data in it uh, to browse or explore it, but also um, to take a set of Mark records and export that data into an SQL, My, MySQL or SQLite uh, compatible database. Um, what MarkEdit has, it has something called the uh, Mark SQL Explorer. You find it under add-ins. Uh, go ahead and select it. And from here you can um, set MarkEdit to work with either a MySQL database or by default use the default uh, SQL Lite format function. If you use MySQL, um, you would check the MySQL box, you would go to MySQL options, and you would enter in the information that you need in order to connect to either a database server that's connected via localhost or connected remotely. Um, in this case, this is an example of what a remote database would kind of look like, um, but on this laptop I don't have access to any remote uh, databases and I haven't installed MySQL, so the examples that I show here are going to be using the, uh, the built-in SQLite database functionality. Um, but the, the, the functionality is the same between the two different database engines. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck to use my SQL option. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and select a Mark Record, uh, Mark Records file. So I've got my Mark Records file here. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a database. And so I'm going to go ahead and create my SQLite database. And I'm going to go ahead and process this record. Now, there's two options in terms of uh, table schemas. Um, that the Mark SQL Explorer will create when it reads Mark data. One is very simple, and that's the one we're going to do first. Um, when I process the record, you'll see that the records is 1,010 records. It's been processed. Um, when it's finished processing, it'll move the database file down to the load existing database file option. I go ahead and load, and you'll see two tabs added to the top, one that's database structure and one that's SQ execute SQL. Database structure shows you what the database looks like. Um, in this case, this is the simplified table schema. Here there's a control database, which is the MarkDB, uh, which includes an, an ID, a title, and um, a set of Mark data. Um, and then you'll see that there's another table called Mark Fields, which has a, an a identifier, which matches the links to the MarkDB uh, title, uh, MarkDB identifier, um, a field, subfield, and then field text. So if I go to execute SQL, I can actually browse now the Mark record um, or Mark records. So in this case, let's say I wanted to see all of the fields that have a subfield A. Um, I could go ahead and look at uh, um, from Mark fields where subfield equals A, and I go ahead and execute that query, and I get back 27,000 results. So there are 27,000 fields that uh, have subfield A's. Well, I can go ahead and, and narrow this down. So let's say I want to see where um, fields um, are equal to 500 and subfields are equal to A. So I can go ahead and execute that again. Well, there's 357 records found. Um, but if you look, there's, there's some identifiers that are duplicates. Well, we can go ahead and find out quickly how many real records there are by grouping by the CID file, the C um, identifier element. In this case, there's 266 actual records that have a 500 field with subfield A. Let's say I want to export those 500 fields. Well, I can go ahead and do that. Um, what I'll do is I will go ahead and link these together where we join, um, we're looking for fields with 500, subfields with A, and where the uh, C identifier equals the identifier in the MarkDB. We'll go ahead and execute again, and we'll see that some new elements have been added, the ID, title, and mark. Um, and from here, we can see that the mark records show up in the mark. And so I can export that data. I can export the results set as a tab delimited file, or I can export the mark records. In this case, I'm going to export the mark records. MarkEdit will ask you which column has the mark data in it. Um, it does this because there's an assumption that you may have actually connect, connected to a database that um, wasn't one created by the Mark SQL Explorer. So you have to tell it which, which, which column has the, the Mark data in it. In this case, it's the Mark column. And it'll support 
um, data that's either in raw mark format or in the mnemonic format like is in the the mark record format here and I'll go ahead and export it and you'll see that the rec records have been exported and if we look on the, the database here you'll see that there actually have been uh, a database a data file that's been created um, that we can evaluate that it's got 266 records that we can look at all right so that's how we would export those data elements um, Sometimes we may find that this isn't granular enough, that this database structure isn't da granular enough. You want to be able to look specifically at specific fields, or you want to be able to look across multiple fields. And while you could probably do it with that database structure, um, it would make it would just be a lot easier if it was a little bit more granular. In those cases, MarkEdit has um, an expanded table schema. So I'm going to go ahead and retake that same file, and we're going to generate using the expanded table schema. So we'll go ahead and reprocess these records. We'll go ahead and reload the database. And if you look at the database structure now, all of the records have been broken into individual tables where anything with a, an OXX field, the OXX fields get broken into one table, um, the one XX fields, two XX fields, three XX fields, four XX fields, and, and whatnot. And what this does is this allows us to search very specific elements. So if we wanted to search uh, for example, for a specific set of um, data in a control field, we can do that. Or if we want to look for a specific set of data um, in a uh, in a um, in a, a 500 field or an 8xx field or a 9xx field. So we'll go ahead and do the same kind of search that we did before. Um, let's say we wanted to find all of this, the records that have a subfield A in a 500, a 5xx field. We can go ahead and do that. And there are 21, uh, uh, 200, uh, 2,170 uh, records found. Let's say we want to limit that down to, um, to uh, records where the subfield A occurs in a uh, 505. there are 458 records. Uh, let's say we want to make sure that these are unique. There are 454. And let's say we want to actually export the mark records. We can export those 554 records. Uh, we can also then do things where we're um, building record sets using multiple tables. Uh, so let's say we want to look specifically at um, tables that, let's say you want to look specifically at uh, records that have um, an O2, uh, uh, ISBN subfield A, um, and uh, a, I don't know, like a, an 856. Um, you presumably could do that. Um, by doing uh, doing searches between the two tables. And so we go ahead and run that element set, and we get back um, 541 records. And you can see it's combined the two um, data elements as a result. And so we wanted to, to export just specific data. We can do that.
and we can go ahead and limit the kind of information that we see. Um, let's say we didn't want to include anything but just the marked data fields, so we're going to go ahead and combine those together. Um, we can do that too. We can go ahead and export and just get um, the mark record and the identifier if that's what we really want. and go ahead and export and do our match. Then we get back our our uh, 541 records. Um, we have some duplicates. There's 149 records that meet this, these criteria and then we can export those mark records. So we can do some fairly interesting things in terms of how we evaluate and analyze different uh, elements within different mark data sets. Um, this will work with very, very large files. This was this tool was actually created to work with um, to actually evaluate um, the the Hattie Trust data file. Um, it was uh, given to a researcher who was interested in doing some interesting data analysis, and this tool was created specifically for that purpose. Um, processing the uh, the Hattie Trust data file, um, which actually came um, in a uh, an XML format was translated into MARC. Um, I believe the data file that uh, the researcher had um, was a uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 8 to 10 million items. took roughly about uh, 10 minutes to generate an SQLite data file. Um, on the laptop, uh, some element, uh, the queries uh, could be substantial depending on what the kind of queries were. Sometimes it took up to uh, uh, took you know at a short end of 15 to high end up to about 30 seconds to make the queries, um, but the thing was that, that uh, in terms of being able to do that kind of data ana a data analysis, it was it was acceptable performance. It might not be for you. If it isn't, I'd recommend using uh, SQL my MySQL database. Uh, in which case the uh, the the time to process the data actually takes a little longer depending on how you set up your indexes. Um, so. Uh, that's what the that's kind of what the Mark SQL Explorer does. It's kind of what it's been designed to do. Um, I'm always interested in hearing if there are people that uh, have um, en enhancement requests or if they have ideas on how we can make it better, um, or maybe even ideas on how we could uh, how how the tool could be set up so that the um, the table uh, the table schema is maybe even more um, uh, granular for for maybe different kinds of queries. So if you have any questions, just let me know.